Hey guys, welcome back to First Recapped. In today's video, we are going to put the spotlight on a 2000 Japanese action thriller film titled Battle Royale. This is the story that depicts the fact that the need for survival can turn the gentlest human being into a monster. Let's see how the movie paints this picture in the best way possible. The movie starts and the information comes to light that in the near future, following a major recession, the Japanese government has passed the BR Act to curb the nation's juvenile delinquency. According to this act, a group of high school students is to engage in a battle to death inside an arena. The one who manages to survive wins the game. We then see a scene from a year ago when a girl is transported by the military personnel, she is covered in blood, wearing a high school uniform and she is the winner. We see a student named Shuya recalls the time his mother left him and then he found his father hanging from the ceiling. Their teacher, Kitano, also resigns after being wounded by Yashitoki Kininabu, Shuya's best friend. One year later, Shuya's class takes a field trip, while they are on the bus, a girl named Megumi persuades her best friend named Nariko to offer her homemade cookies to Shuya. When she does that, Shuya is a little weirded out but ends up accepting it and giving it to Nobu. All the people on the bus then fall asleep, as the bus goes through a tunnel, Shuya wakes up and finds everybody asleep. However, the conductor and the bus driver are wearing masks. When the conductor sees that Shuya is up, he knocks him out right away. Shuya and his classrooms then wake up in a dark room with metal collars around their necks. This school is situated on a remote island. The students get up and back away in fear of two unknown students named Kawada and Kiriyama. Through the window of the classroom, they see a helicopter landing on the abandoned school and a number of soldiers come out. We then see the teacher, Kitano who was attacked by Nobu, he gets out and right away comes to the classroom. He goes to the class board and writes BRT asking the students if they are familiar with the BR Act. When no one is able to give him an answer, he goes to Nobu and disciplines him right away as he explains what BR Act is. Explaining that the class was chosen to participate in the annual battle royale as a result of the act. The class is supposed to engage in a battle until only one of them is left. The whole is in utter shock, this is when Kitano shows them the body of another one of their teachers named Mr. Hayashida. He has been brutally killed because he begged for his class to be released. This is when the students start to scream in fear as they realize that they are in a life-death situation now. Kitano then goes on to play a video in which they explain the rules. The video starts and the host congratulates them for being chosen to participate in Battle Royale. This is when Kitano spots students talking, he throws a knife that slices the brain of that student. The other students are horrified at this, they haul ass toward the class door to run away but the soldiers fire some shots as a warning, and they back away. Amidst all this, Nariko gets hit. It pisses his best friend Nobu off and he lashes on Kitano. Kitano however attacks his leg with that knife and then he is punched by another soldier. Kitano then asks the soldiers to back away and goes back to the video. It is revealed that the island is divided into different zones. Kitano is going to announce danger zones every day and if the students are in there at a specific time, their collars are going to explode. It is then revealed that this collar works as a locator and a heart monitor. They are also going to explode if any student tries to take them off, it is going to get tempered and explode right away. Nobu again loses his cool and goes on to yell at Kitano yet again. One of the students named Motobuchi tells Nobu to shut up so that they can focus on what is being told in the video. Nobu attacks him and they get into a brawl until they are separated by the soldiers. Kitano then grabs a remote and Nobu's collar starts beating. He asks other students to help him but they get away from him and Shuya watches his friend dying in a helpless state. When Nobu dies, Shuya is heartbroken as he looks at the picture they took while they were on the bus earlier. Shuya is pissed off at Kitano now, he makes his way to teach him a lesson but the other students hold him off as he too would be killed. The woman in the video then goes on to explain that if there is more than one survivor after the three days time, the collars are going to explode and there will be then no survivors. The winner of this game should only be one, so, the students are to make sure only one of them survives. The winner of the battle will be hailed and also allowed to go back home. Memora, one of the students asks why their class has been chosen for this, Kitano tells him that the selection was just random. 
He then asks why the hell is the government doing this in the first place and Kitano tells him that it could very much be because of the student's disobedience. Soldiers then bring in multiple supply bags, each student is provided rations, a map, supplies, and a random weapon. Before they are allowed to leave there, their names are called out one by one and they are given a bag. A fat boy named Yoshio is the first one to be called. One of the girls named Sakura starts crying and throws the supply bag at Kitano before leaving. Kawada leaves the classroom at first but comes back, he pushes Kiriyama rudely and demands a different bag. Shuya on the other hand leaves the building and hides in a bush to check what he has got in his bag. As he does that, Tendo appears in front of him and she has an arrow in her neck as she walks towards Shuya. The girl comes too close to him and collapses as someone continues to fire arrows at her as she walked on. Shuya looks around and spots Yoshio coming at him with a crossbow. He throws his torchlight at his face before he and Nariko get out of there. As he gets hit on the face, he tumbles down and loses his crossbow. In the meantime, a student named Kajushi appears and picks up the crossbow, the fat boy gets up, and as he advances toward Kajushi, the boy panics and ends up pulling the trigger. Shuya and Nariko on the other hand find a cave near the island shore and hide there. Shuya takes a look at Nariko's arm, he is relieved to see that the bullet did not inflict that deep a wound. When they open their bags, they find a pot lid and binoculars as their weapons. Shuya now talks about being on the same page, he wonders if the whole class can get on the same page, they might be able to escape the island but Nariko says that she does not trust anyone anymore given what has been going on during the last few minutes. They then start talking about Shuya's best friend Nobu, Shuya remembers how they used to be in a foster home together, Nobu was not coming to school and then Nariko wrote to him asking him to come as there was going to be a school trip. Everything that has happened so far on this trip, Nariko blames herself for this, she blames herself for the death of Nobu. Shuya however tells her that she could not have known and this is not her fault. A bunch of students on the other hand corner Kiriyama by the shore, they mock the paper fan he got as a weapon. Since he is not their classmate, the students start to think if he is a spy for Kitano. One of the students goes on to put a gun on his head but it does not turn out to be a good idea as Kiriyama snatches the gun from him and starts shooting at them. He kills many students, as he walks away, he takes a gun and two grenades from them. Sakura stands at the edge of a cliff and she throws her bag into the ocean as she does not want to be a part of this game. She is with her boyfriend named Kazuhiko and they cry as they think about the circumstances they are in. Both of them then decide that the only way to escape from this place is to jump off this cliff, they hold hands and jump together into the ocean. A student named Megumi sits in a room where she looks at the pictures of her classmates, the ones she took on this very trip, the door opens and another girl walks in, Megumi grabs her stun gun but does not shoot. It turns out to be Mitsuko comes in and Megumi allows her to approach her thinking that they could work as partners. Mitsuko takes a look at the pictures and then she grabs the stun gun as well. In no time, she goes on tackle Megumi to the ground and tells her that she just saw two students hanging themselves and that she does not want to die just like that, she tells her that she is going to fight this, and then she slits her throat with her sickle. As Kitano announces on the loudspeakers the names of the fallen students Nariko is shocked to hear Megumi's name, Shia however urges her to keep walking as they are in the danger zone. The first six hours see twelve deaths, for by suicide. The psychotic Mitsuko Soma and psychopathic Kazuo Kiriyama become the most dangerous players to others in the game. Transfer student Shogo Kawada lets Shuya go after killing one student who was about to shoot Shuya. After that, two girls named Yumiko and Yukiko are killed by Kiriyama. Shuya is angry at Kiriyama and Kawada tells him that only they can put end to this by ending their own lives. Amid shifting loyalties and violent confrontations, Shuya promises to keep Nariko Nakagawa safe, feeling it a duty to his fallen friend, as Kininabu secretly loved her. Kawada reveals to the pair that he won a previous battle royale at the cost of his girlfriend, whose death he seeks to avenge. Kiriyama attacks and Shuya is wounded by his Uzi. He is saved by Hiroki Sujimura, who had his best friend die in his arms. Shuya awakens in the island's lighthouse, bandaged by Yuki Utsumi, who has a crush on him. Five other girls are also hiding in the building. One of them, Yuko, attempts to poison him out of fear of him killing them. 
However, Yuka accidentally eats the food, leading to a shootout between the girls. Yuko is the only survivor, horrified, she commits suicide. Shuya, Nariko and Kawada set out to find Mimura. Kiriyama kills Mitsuko, making Nariko the last surviving girl. Mimura, with two others, infiltrates the JSDF's computer system. Kiriyama kills them, but not before Mimura uses his homemade bomb to blow up the base to hide all evidence. When the trio arrives at the burning base, Kawada kills Kiriyama, who had his eyes burned out by the explosion, but in turn, is injured by his Uzi. On the final day, Kawada, aware of the caller's internal microphones, seemingly kills Shuya and Nariko by shooting them. Suspicious, Kitano ends the game, intent on personally killing the victor. He realizes that Kawada hacked the system months beforehand, and disabled Shuya and Nariko's tracking devices. The trio confronts Kitano in the control room, and he unveils a homemade painting of the massacred class depicting Nariko as the sole survivor. He reveals that he was unable to bear the hatred between him and his students, having been rejected by his own daughter, and confesses that he always thought of Nariko as a daughter. He asks her to kill him, but Shuya shoots him after he threatens her. Kitano's daughter calls him, after an argument, he dies of his wounds. The trio leaves the island on a boat, but Kawada dies from his injuries, happy that he found friendship. Shuya and Nariko are declared fugitives, last seen on the run toward Shibuya Station. Nariko gives Shuya the Sido Dragon Claw Butterfly Knife Nobu used to injure Kitano at the beginning as they flee together. Wow, that was quite an interesting story. Wouldn't you agree? Let us know what your thoughts are after watching it. Like and subscribe for more awesome videos like this. See you all in the next one.